Today we're going to be looking at a poem from the Love and Relationships Cluster. We're going to be looking at Mother Any Distance by Simon Armitage. Mother Any Distance is about a boy who's moving out of his family home for the first time. So he calls his mum to help him to move and especially asks for her help in measuring the house. But actually, the poem is an allegory. It's not really just about moving out of a house, it's about the bond between parents and children and how permanent and significant that bond is. So basically, the poem uses the boy moving out of his home to explore the theme of growing up. Let's read it. Mother, any distance greater than a single span requires a second pair of hands. You come to help me measure windows, pelmets, doors, the acres of the walls, the prairies of the floors. You at the zero end, me with a spool of tape, recording length, reporting meters, centimeters, back to base, then leaving up the stairs, the line still feeding out, unreeling years between us. Anchor, kite. I spacewalk through the empty bedrooms, climb the ladder to the loft, to breaking point where something has to give. Two floors below, your fingertips still pinch the last one hundredth of an inch. I reach towards a hatch that opens on an endless sky to fall or fly. I really like this poem. I think it's really beautiful and it reminds me of my mummy a little bit. Now it's really important that we select at least three juicy quotations from this poem. And by juicy, I mean a quotation that has interesting language devices and words that we can zoom into. So if this poem comes up in your exam, you're ready and you can write about it. So let's work our way through the poem and try and select those quotations. The poem begins with the speaker directly addressing his mother and justifying why he's called her to help. He says, if any distance is greater than a span, a span, of course it's going to need a second person to help mum. He says, mother, any distance greater than a single span requires a second pair of hands. I really like the fact that the poem starts with a half rhyme, which could be emblematic of their close relationship. Or maybe it makes the speaker seem a little bit childish because children like rhymes. But the fact that it's only a half rhyme shows that he is on the brink of adulthood. He then goes on to list all the things around the house that the mother is needed to assist with measuring. So he says, you come to help me measure windows, pelmets, doors. And the list demonstrates how dependent the speaker is on his mother in day-to-day -day life. And that list then goes on to include the metaphors of acres and prairies. When he says the acres of the walls, the prairies of the floors to symbolize the magnitude of the size of his new home and perhaps showing how anxious he feels about the move. There is obviously a hyperbolic description of the walls and the floors because they're not really prairies, which is a huge grassland, which suggests that the speaker feels overwhelmed and he's needing to exaggerate to justify that he isn't quite ready to let his mum go yet. He's like, mum, but it's, it's a prairie, it's huge, mum, I need your help. He's trying to justify it. He says, you at the zero end, me with the spool of tape, recording length, reporting meters, centimeters back to base, then leaving up the stairs. So he's describing them measuring together. We should probably analyze this quotation to copy it down. The measuring tape is an important symbol in the poem. The speaker is, walking up the stairs and his mum is holding on to one end of the tape, symbolising her stability and her constant presence at the zero end. She's always there, you know, she's got him. The spool of tape emphasises how far he has the potential to go. There's a spool. Despite his trepidation, he can go far. Or the spool of tape could show how much love there is in between them until that tape runs out they're gonna stay connected. There's a juxtaposition between the direct address of you and the personal pronoun me, which could indicate the physical separation between the speaker and his mum as he tries to find his identity. It's the speaker 
who's walking up the stairs, which is a symbol for him growing up. He's going up and also moving towards his new destiny. But structurally, the asyndetic listing, which shows there aren't any connectives and, 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 it's just with commas, shows he continuously checks in with his mum by coming back to base and reporting meters, conveying his need for her guidance and reassurance. And that quotation goes on to say, the line still feeding out unreeling years between us and Kakite. Let's analyze this one too. Here, the tape measure metaphor extends to become the symbol of an umbilical cord, which is the natural and permanent connection between a mother and her son. And that metaphor mirrors the physical connection a mother has with her child even before they are born. But the line feeding out, getting longer, could also be the increasing distance in between them. The single word metaphors of anchor, kite, represent the mother and the son. She is the anchor, she provides the support and safety for him, and he is the kite, seeking freedom and flying away from the nest. It's almost as if the comfort of her being there as an anchor gives him the courage to explore what's waiting for him outside as a kite. Structurally, if we look at this, there is enjambment, which means the sentence goes on to the next line and the next line. And that enjambment has been employed by Armitage to create a break in that sentence, which could perhaps symbolize the speaker's anxiety at breaking away from his mum. Or, because the sentence separates, maybe it's showing the fact that they will inevitably separate. As you grow up, you have to leave your parents. Also, that enjambment could represent his journey around the house and his excitement at exploring a new place. I spacewalk through the empty bedrooms, climb the ladder to the loft to breaking point where something has to give. The speaker is walking upstairs, going further away from his mum. Spacewalk is again a metaphor for exploration, going into space, as if he's walking into another world, the world of growing up. And he reaches the ladder to the loft where something has to give. And that's a really significant moment because he cannot go any higher without breaking that connection with his mum. The tape measure only stretches to this point and the house only goes to that point. Two floors below, your fingertips still pinch the last one hundredth of an inch I reach. Here, the speaker reassures himself by thinking of his mum, who's only two floors below. I can do whatever I like. I can climb the tree because my, my dad's standing at the bottom. So she's holding on to the last one hundredth of the tape measure, which is an image of the mother not wanting to let her son go. She's like grabbing onto the last bit that she can but he knows she's down there and this gives him the confidence to reach towards a hatch that opens on an endless sky to fall or fly. Let's analyze that quotation, it's really beautiful. So literally he's opening up the door that opens up in the loft, but the hatch is also a metaphor for adulthood. He is opening himself up to adulthood. He's ready for independence and his future. Hatch. If you think about it, it's also animal imagery, you know, like eggs hatch. So it creates the image of rebirth. He's starting a new life. I think that's really clever. And the fact that it's an endless sky, the adjective endless connotes the freedom and the opportunities that await him outside. The speaker and the reader don't know if he's going to fall or fly, if he's gonna succeed in life or if he's gonna fall. Fall or fly, there's fricative alliteration, which perhaps, you know, like, it's like you're biting your bottom lip, like maybe it symbolizes his fear, but it's also his mum's unwavering love and support that allow him to take the plunge safely into growing up, knowing that she's always gonna be there for him. And we can reinforce that message through the form of this poem. The poem is written in the form of a sonnet, which is typically a poem about love or death. And usually a sonnet is 14 lines. But here, Armitage breaks that into a 15 line poem. So you know the last little bit to fall or fly 
instead of just keeping it on that 14th line, he puts that in its own line to demonstrate the child breaking away from conformity and tradition and breaking away from the safety blanket of his parent. Armitage isn't concerned whether the boy will succeed or fall. He's more concerned with the familial bond between the boy and his mother. That's the bit that he wants to focus on, not what happens in the future. That's it. It's a nice short poem. It's not too long. It's not too complicated. However, it is not enough to just talk about language and structure. We've identified language devices. We've identified structural devices. We've analyzed what it shows. But in your exam, you also need to bring in context and poet's message. So we need to explain what was going on during the time the poem was written or in the poet's life, and therefore, what message was the poet trying to give the reader through this poem? Why did they write it? What's the point? Some interesting context points for Mother Any Distance are, this poem was published in the collection Book of Matches, which was released in 2001. And the idea behind the Book of Matches was that Armitage wanted to write poems that were short enough to read by the time a match burns out. However, behind that simplicity, he explores the love and tenderness and pain that is found in familial relationships, relationships with your family, particularly how those relationships change over time. And that's it. That is a full analysis of Mother Any Distance. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do give it a like and do not forget to check out the rest of the videos in this series.